Welcome to A Canadian Investing in the U.S., a podcast and YouTube channel focused on Canadians buying real estate with host Glenn Sutherland. Welcome to a new episode of A Canadian Investing in the U.S. This is your host, Glenn Sutherland. This week, I'm here with Karimi and Sohil. Um, guys, let's start off by uh, giving guys a, we'll maybe do a little bit of story, a little bit of intro, uh, and then we'll, we'll, we'll go from there. Yeah, so I am Karimi and uh, my son Sohail here. We are Bantri Builders. And uh, it all started with uh, attending Glenn's course in uh, last, uh, uh, I think it was March 2023. Okay. And I was really impressed by, uh, you know, the content and uh, the way that he, 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 you know, touched upon all the aspects of uh, Canadian investing in the U.S., so from our background, you know, we are, we are basically builders from India. So we have real estate background and we have made about like uh, constructed about 20 buildings back in Bombay. So I was a part of that business too, again called Mantri Builders. And then coming to Canada, I'm certified as a, as a I'm, uh, you know, qualified as a certified property manager. Uh, so here is a, is an electromechanical technician. So both have engineering backgrounds. So we are part of the, um, uh, the real estate business. Uh, we start. We started from Toronto, and we invest in the U.S. And uh, our market is uh, Pennsylvania. That's awesome. So, a couple things there. First, thank you for mentioning the course. I do appreciate that. Um, you said your uh, like property management background and engineering background. Those are like a very com- like you know it's it's a common theme. I hate, and I think it's uh you got like a, with engineering you got a really good mine for detail typically with yep. the engineers and yep, so yes. their underwriting is usually impeccable and then having the pm you just understand all the problems that are going yeah, um, yeah. before we get into this too much maybe i'd like where is your where are you are you managing properties where like is that in toronto or where do you do your property management uh so i work with a company here in uh, toronto and it's a very big company uh, we have about 162 uh, shopping centers all okay. over canada yeah so that's my uh, day job and uh, part time on the weekends and after office hours, uh, we manage our business. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm a I'm a I'm a CNC technical specialist, so I'm very much into you know details, drawings, and everything. So like that uh, that aspect of my job helps me you know designing uh, like layout and everything uh, for like the new layouts, uh, open up floor plans and everything for the business. And uh, I, so again, you know, this is, I do that as my day job. Like I have a day job as a CNC technical specialist and then whatever we're doing uh, as a business. So it's like after office hours and on the weekends. That's awesome. No, I love it. So maybe let's go into the story. So we started with, you you took the course and then what happened from there? So we took the course and... um... And uh, you touched upon all aspects of U.S. investing. And since we were already, you know, into real estate a lot and uh, being in the, you know, uh, in all aspects of uh, property management, stuff like that, dealing with contractors and all that. So we sort of just jumped into it and, um, you know, we started. So first of all, we looked at uh, places which are closer because we wanted to do it remotely just like you do. Yep. But then, you know, we said, you know, first, uh, let's get acquainted with the, uh, you know, different markets, etc. in the U.S. So we looked at places where we could drive down. So like yep. Cleveland uh, was a place, Detroit, and then, you know, uh, Pittsburgh. So, but there was all bidding was going on in Cleveland, I saw, you know, when when, when I was looking at it. Mm-hmm. So then said, you know, let's look at uh, Pittsburgh, which was again in the top 10 uh, uh, markets for flipping at that time. And that's how we said, you know, we'll do Pittsburgh, which is like a six hour drive away. So we can go check on our houses on the weekends and things like that. So that's how we got started. We went to uh, bigger pockets, uh, got introductions for realtors and the realtor gave us uh, investor friendly uh, contractors. And, you know, they are also investors in a sense. So they know what to do and uh, how to do and things like that. So that's how we got started. So just to add a point over here for uh, Pittsburgh, uh, we also looked at, you know, the median home prices of the, in the, in the markets uh, on all, in all the states. So Pennsylvania uh, is lower than the, you know, the median house market of the, like the whole U.S. 
so where the like us now uh, stands at 400 and uh, something or like a odd figure uh, as a medium home price so pennsylvania is at 200 and um, 75 or something like that 250 or 275 yeah so so we that was one of the reasons because like you know uh, we are still you know in the phase of uh, you know new election and uh, new president being selected so it's kind of all but yeah we are expecting good changes so, Okay. And so um, the one, like whenever you take the course, a lot of the starts is just to figure out where you're going first and then you'd have to go yeah. through the steps of doing some analysis. Um, I, I kind of know a little bit of this story already, so I can kind of jump ahead, but um, what kind of, um, you know, type of real estate were you looking at? Like a flip, a burr? What was the the appeal and what were you, what were you thinking for the first project? So f first I thought, you know, we'd make some money doing flips. And then do burrs because burrs, uh, you know, uh, found out later, of course, that, you know, with foreign nationals, uh, the amount of uh, LTV that you get in refinance is lower. So you, you can't actually, you know, it doesn't make like a perfect burr unless you have an investor who is a U.S. citizen. So that sort of, you know, stopped us from initially starting out with uh, buying holes or burrs. Yep. Uh, so we'll start with flips and... Um, we are doing with investors right now. So we offer equity participation. So that's like a huge return to investors. So so that's the way that we started. That's good. And then um, how, how did it go with selecting the property? Um, was it the first property you found? You have to look at a lot. Like what, what's it like to, to find a deal in, in Pittsburgh? So we basically go on, you know, uh, MLS. Uh, go on, uh, we find like listings on MLS and, you know, uh, uh, we have some of we bought some of the properties from wholesalers too uh, but uh, so like with MLS you know everything is you know uh, given to us like you know uh, like a buyer disclosure like a seller disclosure whatever is there wrong with the property this that everything you know they have to disclose it before we enter the property right yeah. so I feel that's the safest bet if you're like starting out and uh, that that's what we did. So we bought a couple of properties uh, from MLS and uh, our realtor, he also helped us, you know, uh, figure out the rehab cost. But once we did like a couple, I got a hang of it. And we also like underwrite, I, I started underwriting, you know, a couple of deals a week. And we started giving out at least, you know, two, three offers a week then. And um, now we have about 12 properties, uh, you know, that we are flipping. Wow! And, uh, we, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we were able to scale really fast. Yeah, yeah, like you and, able to scale is quick. That's amazing. Yeah, and then one we we finished one, and uh, we have sold that one. Uh, so we have like a you know really good example uh, to like yeah. start. Yeah. So um, okay, so you, you found that property. Um, <laughs> oh, actually, did how many did you have to look through a lot of properties to find that one? Like, how hard was it to find a property in Pittsburgh? So it was not hard because like it, uh, we we didn't have that much bidding wars going on. We still have a few, yep. you know, in the, in a really good neighborhood. Like people try, tend to bid uh, a lot over there. Uh, but otherwise, you know, the bidding wars, is, the Pittsburgh market is kind of, uh, you know, it's medium paced, not not fast, not slow. Okay. So, but to add here, sorry, since the one year that we have been there, now the bidding wars are really heating up <laughs> yeah. in Pittsburgh. More and more people are going to Pittsburgh. And recently, there was a big place in our uh, offer on a property, and there were 26 bids on it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and you also had like a realtor to probably pre screen them a little bit so you could give them a little bit of an idea of what they're what you're kind of looking for. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what kind of um, you can get into as much numbers or as little numbers as you like. Right. Because um, I know they're a little bit personal, but what kind of price points were you looking to purchase at? So we usually go uh, from zero to one hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah. And um, that's that's what our you know buy box is set as. Yeah. And I have a couple of, you know, buy box for different different neighborhoods uh, on, you know, made up on Zillow. Uh, I eat Zillow for like breakfast. That's what <laughs> you know, that's what you you gotta do, right? When you have to underwrite so many deals and cater so many investors, that's what I do. I underwrite so many deals and so many properties that you know. Oh, we can probably you know give an offer for this if, it's, if the if the property is you know been on the market for a while. Then you gotta lowball it, try to get it you yep. know as uh, as as lower as possible. So I I do that. 
and then he he checks the <laughs> he's the boss so he checks the final numbers and lets me know that whether it's good or not so the realtor walks the property for us if you are interested uh, he sends us comps and then he walks the property for us if you are interested and yep. gives us yep. a rough estimate of the rehab and then uh, if we have time or if uh, it is permitted then we have a contractor walk for us or otherwise we have to go with the bid yeah that's good. Um, and when you're doing like 12 renovations at a time, or maybe it's 11 because you already did one, um, yeah. how many contracts are you Is it one contractor that can handle that whole load or do you have to get multiples? Hello, everybody. Thanks for listening to the podcast. Uh, I just wanted to let you know that I've created a new coaching program. I believe the new coaching program has way more value than any of the programs that have even existed in the past. What we've done is pre-recorded all the lessons so that you can work through it at your own pace, which is pretty cool. And then we're going to meet up on a regular basis to answer the questions, do deal analysis, and actually spend our time together working on things instead of spending our time learning things. I think this will make a seamless transition to buying in the United States and will help you solve a lot of your problems. If this is of interest to you, go to glensutherland.com slash coaching. I hope to help you guys invest in the United States, and I hope we provide as much value as possible. Back to the podcast. No, we have multiple. Multiple. So yeah. we have a couple of properties in Pittsburgh and uh, some in Philadelphia. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Uh, so Pittsburgh, we have about eight. Eight? We have eight in Pittsburgh and uh, 12 in, uh, sorry, four in Philadelphia. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I know that makes a lot like that makes sense too. And then you can split it. And honestly, I love having even like two of everything in every market. You never know. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Know, someone gets into heart attack or somebody, you never know. And it's not something happens to people. Yeah. 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 To be able to move absolutely, around. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So yeah. we have like uh, four contractors in uh, Pittsburgh and uh, two in uh, Philadelphia. Philadelphia so far. Yeah. Okay. And then to do these, to buy like 11 properties, I'll, I'll, at a time or 12, whatever, <laughs> somewhere in there. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm assuming you're going to need some lending. Um, I, is, I, maybe I'm being presumptuous. Do you guys uh, use like lending for these, these projects? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. So we started the first one with the family and friends. Yep. And then from the second, second and the third one onwards, we used the hard money lending. Hard money lending. Again, yeah. Lord, credit to you, uh, Glenn, you learned everything from you there. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you guys find any like uh, anything you didn't expect or anything that was uh, more difficult than it should have been with even the lending or even doing the project? Uh, no, so of course, you know, dealing with contract is always a challenge, right? In any market, uh, so we did have uh, to change a contractor in one project. Um, yeah, we had to fire them. Yeah, because so, it was yeah. the first law. Yeah, yes, it was like a misjudgment on our part. So we had to change the contractor, and we had to pay them off and simultaneously take the the no lien certificate and you know things like that. So that was a bit of a touchy you know situation, but otherwise, as far as contracting goes, it's all good. But um, lending wise, yeah, the you have to finish a few projects to make the lenders, you know. Uh, the, ensure that they have trust in you and you know uh, in this in the sense so otherwise the rate of interest goes on increasing so like you know we have right we we would like uh, i think we are, we are going to finish about five in the next two months so hopefully after that should be you know we have a, like a pro positive you know track record that's what they look for and even us being like foreign investors it was tough for us to get like you know a couple of first initial loans because they are they all are looking for like track record and you know this that assurance everything but now since uh you know we have completed one and we have like a uh really good broker also that we go by and he, he he's like amazing right uh so he he deals with like a lot our like financing and stuff so he has like personal uh you know uh we we have like a bond with him now Yep. So he knows that how like uh, the first flip we finished. So we called him over and we showed him what we do and how we are like we are completely you know um, uh, you know the buyer focus. So whatever the buyer needs, we we tend to we tend to have that in the in our properties and go for that. So I I finished all the properties that we are working on as I'm gonna you know live in that property. So we have that you know mentality going into the deal and. Um, so with each yeah. property, we provide to the buyer um, a home warranty, 
uh, for one year. Then we do a clear inspection report. So we do an inspection, building inspection before and after. So we ensure that the inspection is absolutely clear, nothing to go on it. Yeah. And then the third thing that we provide is the interior layout. So we have an interior designer on our panel and he goes to all our properties. So everything is color coordinated, kitchen design, backsplash, everything. So that also helps plus the layout, you know, whether the bed will fit in the room or not. And, you know, people have that uh, view, you know. So that also is taken care of. And then the fourth one is the uh, sewer scoping because properties in Pennsylvania are like average age of a single family home is 90 years. So, so the sewer scoping is important. That's the first thing that buyers ask for. So we do that in advance and it is also covered under home warranty. So with these things, when uh, the buyer comes in, you know, they, they find that peace of mind, you know, because roof leaks are covered, plumbing, everything is new, but still it is covered under yep. the home warranty. That's awesome. Um, and you, with a home warranty, is it something that like you personally provide? Like, so if they actually need to do a claim, your, you know, one of your contractors runs out and does it and it just comes out of your pocket or is it like you've paid for like an insurance policy? Yeah, pay, pay. it's a paid policy. So now the contractor, we have an agreement with the contractor. They give one year, uh, you know, workmanship uh, warranty. Uh, warranty on it. Mm -hmm. And then after that, yeah, so that is covered. And then after that, you know, we have this home warranty also, which is like an insurance policy. So uh, that is also covered. So, you know, a lot of uh, things for the buyers, uh, peace of mind. Yeah, those are a lot of good tips there. And you guys are doing a very extensive job. I can I can tell from just the way, you know, all the different <laughs> things you're doing. Um, yeah. Um, what might be running through some of the, the people that are listening's mind um, is, you know, after doing like everything to that level and providing all those services to the the end buyer of the property, um, is there still profit left in this in these in these properties? Yeah. So the <laughs> first one, I'll give you some figures there. Yeah, we bought the property at uh, ninety four five hundred. We did renovation of uh, seventy five thousand on it, and we sold it for. So we listed at two seventy five, and we sold it in three days. We got two offers. We sold it at two eighty one. Nice, that is yeah. great. We <laughs> got fifty thousand dollar profit, and it, we finished it in five months. That. <laughs> That's great. I love that. I love those stories. Yeah. Right? And the second one is almost ready. We are going actually this Sunday to have a look and, and maybe list it next week. So that we bought for 100000 Yep. We are spending 95000 on it. And we, we, so we made a, so we made a half bath on it to, yep. you know, change the comps. And we are hoping to list my it. Favorite yeah. That's my favorite thing. That's my favorite thing is to change the comps. Yeah. If we didn't, if we didn't do that, we would have to list it like uh, two thirty was the comp, which yeah. would not be profitable. We added a half bath, and we are hoping to list it at two ninety. Nice, I love it. <laughs> I love it. And the, I mean, no like way, a half you, bath costs sixty yeah, grand. You are our teacher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, those are great tips and great great ways to go. Um. I'm gonna go back a little bit with the contractor, if it's not too painful. Um, yeah. What was the what did the contractor do that uh, caused you to fire them? So so I deal with a lot of you know rehab. So he uh, so we have divided kind of our work. Uh, yeah. I do the deal underwriting. He deals with the financing. I deal with the rehab. So we have like our you know work cut out for us, right? Yeah. And uh, so when when I am you know like looking at the rehab, that rehab shouldn't have taken so long. You know that rehab should have taken about you know three months or something um, to like from start to finish. Everything should have been done. Uh, but the contractors were you know there, I saw no progress. You know uh, he he went for, uh, for a vacation and I was here. I was managing the whole business by myself. Yeah. And uh, managing you know at that point we had like nine properties. Uh, that I was managing and looking after and I didn't see progress coming from this property. So I was like, uh, you know, I got to do something about this. So he was there. He, I uh, I was like, I was talking to the contractors that it's not going to work out between, you know, uh, uh, if you're going to, if you guys are going to be super slow and, you know, if you're not going to perform at the level that we want you guys to perform because we, as soon as, so fix and flip loans, they're like working for like, you know, you have a period of six months where you have to, you know, start the property 
uh, and then finish it within the six months. So you got to sell the property within the six month mark. Um, uh, but with them, it was hard for me to achieve that. So I was like, you know, this won't work out. So we went, uh, so we took the bids and we went uh, to them and we were like, uh, you know, this was not done, this and this. So we we negotiated a bit. We we ended on a mutual agreement that, you know, um, you you guys finish this much work and we'll pay you this much when you guys have to leave now. You know, we'll get somebody else to finish this because it doesn't, you know, add up, you know, so much time. I think we misjudged the the contractor and uh, we took on a small small contractor basically. Yeah, who he wasn't uh, he didn't have a team of his own, so he used to rely on a uh, different plumber, different electrician, and then you know if you don't have good relationship, they're not going to come when they call you. Yeah. So if they yeah. come after two weeks, then uh, you're you're gone. Really you're just gets held two weeks and sometimes yeah. yeah. held two yeah. weeks and just yeah. 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 So we right. gave some time to them. We spent about three months to them, but nothing was working out. So then we thought, you know, let's part, part, part amicably. We can still give you small jobs, like if there's a bathroom to be done or something like that. But then, you know, a full house is not, I don't think you can manage it. Yeah. Yeah. Did you do anything different with the new contract or even the way you, questions you asked them ahead of time or um, just how everything went that just, just to try and try and make sure that that didn't happen again? Yeah, so we uh, we when we went uh, we we had him walk the property and uh, you know take up uh, you know from where he took off uh, and then uh, prepare a list and then estimate it. You know, so we lost like about ten thousand dollars on it. Uh, you know, the work which they said they had to do but wasn't done. So yeah. this is a learning for us. Yeah, but you made it sounds like you made a lot of money on the project, so it were it worked out. Um, but it it does suck when your your uh, contractor goes out of budget. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, this is the third one. This still uh, work is going on. We yeah, have to work finish uh, by fifteenth April, I think. The new contract is going to finish around fifteenth of April. Yeah. So we it it also helped us, you know, uh, like our in our screening process. Uh, so now when we screen a contractor, we we try to gauge where his you know strength and weaknesses are. And how big is his crew? You know, if he is, he, if he can manage something, you know, uh, when we throw at him, and you know, like well, because like we we tend to have like a you know couple of projects going on at once. Yeah. So we, we want to gauge how much can this guy do before we add something to his you know work list. Uh, so that's what we we do now. That's that's really smart because a lot of times what what contractors like to do is they always want to be busy. So yeah. what they'll do is they'll take on, you know, they have enough guys to handle, you know, say three jobs. So they'll take mm -hmm. on five jobs so that they're, even when they finish one, they're kind of working on another one at the same time. Yeah. And yeah. They're, they're kind of juggling and push because they need to have something to keep getting paychecks coming in throughout. So it's, yeah. you need a win-win for the investor and the contractor, which is yeah. sometimes yeah. it's a hard place to find the middle ground. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's basically better to sorry. It's basically better to find a contractor who is also an investor. Then they understand when the project will become unprofitable. Yeah, yeah. You know, that is one big uh, uh, thing you know which everybody has to understand. Every flipper has to you know the thin line where once you cross the line, the project becomes unprofitable. And also, uh, and also when we when we look at you know investor friendly contractors, so they are investors themselves, right? And uh, they know how, uh, how hard money lending goes. So they are pretty familiar with, you know, the, the draw processes and, you know, what needs to be filled up, how it's going to work, so everything. So uh, we're not worried in, you know, that sense that, oh, you know, we'll have to pay him out of pocket, you know, like uh, because he needs money. So that's the that's the thing we don't want to do. So we uh, we tell them beforehand that we are going through a hard money lender. And this is how the and we 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 uh we have like a contract. So every when we sign with everybody signs on it when we when we do the contract, right? So yep. we tell that tell the contractor that it's gonna all the money is gonna come through the draws and we can't, you know, shell out something, you know, out of pocket because like we have so many other projects going on. And we're still following the same contract which you gave me. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome though. That's awesome. I'm glad that contract works. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, you're, what we were just saying there, like it, it is a great way to do this is to even if you start using cash is to still just copy that same yes. model, right, for paying mm -hmm. the contractors, even if you don't let them know there's a hard money lender or not, um, yeah. just still run that thing because it, you know, 
it's going to require like you know an inspection or like a draw inspector to show up yep. and yep. they get paid they only get paid for jobs that are 100 percent done drywall halfway done you don't get paid half you're yeah, yeah. so it, yeah. it's just a good model to just copy and, and replicate for your own yes. business or whatever you're yeah. Doing. Yeah. um Anyway, I, that was the, you guess this was a great interview. There was a lot of tips. I think like if I would, I didn't write money notes, but if, for people listening, I think there was a lot of takeaways from this one. This is good. Um, <laughs> yeah, is there anything else you. I should have asked you before before I uh, ask? You know, let you do your contact information. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> anyway, I thought I'd ask. Um, sometimes you guys had some, sometimes you had uh, something on your mind. Um, but anyway. Um, Really, really appreciate you coming on, uh, uh, Karimi. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, Glenn. I would oh, like yeah. to add. Yeah, so so I would say to any Canadian who wants to invest in the U.S., that Glenn's course is the best course to start with. And then, uh, you know, he gives like a, all the support that you want and touches on all the topics that are, in, that are in, involved in, uh, you know, starting off on investing in the U.S., so I think that's 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 the best thing that that you can do, and of course you have to take action. If you don't take action, nothing is going to help. You. Yeah, relentless action. Yeah, I always say that like the the for the cost of it, you'll save way more in headaches and mistakes and learning. Yes, because I also I think I'm the cheapest that there is out there because I wanted there to. Is, yeah, yeah, you are the cheapest. Yes, yeah. definitely. Definitely. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I yeah. appreciate that. That was that's that's great uh, little pitch. Thank you. Um, I just want to add something one more. Uh, just to, uh, you know, like uh, all the Canadian investors that you know are listening to us or you know talking to us. Um, when when you are looking for like a you know like a company formation and uh, all of this stuff, uh, you know, in the US, just start with you know what uh, you know uh, Glenn is uh, suggesting. And, uh, you know, to close any company, you just have, you know, like if the company, you know, it, if it's not suiting you, it will just take $250. But the opportunity cost that you are missing out by not starting and researching a lot and, you know, the formation of the company, if it's a C Corp or S Corp or whatever, um, then, you know, you're missing out a lot on the opportunity cost than, you know, the uh the 250 dollars that will like pay. some investors that we come in contact with they yeah. keep researching for months yeah it's like what's the best sometimes years <laughs> yes yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. no at yeah. taking action is the like it's it's the best way to do it especially if you're in a program like mine and if you're taking action like through it like we can just sit down and I'll make sure that you know we, we don't make as or we make as few mistakes as possible yeah can look at yeah. numbers and check stuff and make sure that you're you're doing what, you know, I don't see anything that looks out of the norm that I'm used to seeing, right? Or some numbers right, right? right. or mm -hmm. somebody hasn't been vetted properly or whatever it is, right? Sometimes I can yeah. see a little hole in there. Yeah. Oh, I appreciate you guys coming on the show. Um, You want to give your contact information if uh, anyone wants to reach out, talk about Pennsylvania, wants to, you know, maybe they want to work with you on some projects yeah. or whatever, if, if you want to yeah. get some information for them. Sure. Yeah. So you can go to our website. Uh, it's www.mantribuildersinc.com. Uh, it's M-A-N-T-R-I buildersinc.com. And uh, you can also reach out to me on Instagram at mantribuilders underscore inc. That's, uh, that's our Instagram tag. Yep. And um and then yeah once you once you send us a DM or you know uh, send uh, our website has our contact information so if you have any questions for us let us know. No, well, that's great. <laughs> I think some people will reach out too because uh, yep. it sounds like you got something going great. And you're scaling it really well. So I love it. I love these stories. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you. Thanks for the show. Thanks, guys. Thank you for having us. That was a nice video.